Hello, and welcome to yet another video. Uh, this is Kevin, also known as AWOL, and today we are going to be using this small easel here, and I'm going to join together my red and gray one. Um, some people have been kind of anticipating this. I've been meaning to get around to it, but uh, there's been some little problems around here. I uh, managed to hurt my back, so this is this is what we got so far. Um, it's I cut down on the number of loops by actually creating one loop per two of the diamonds, um, and this is going to be for my traveler's journal. Um, so at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to make it a cylinder. This way the top is nice and pretty. It's, it's just one of the things of how I like to make it. So, um, so what I needed to do was I needed to find a board to attach it to. Now, mind you, I could just clip it down, right? I could just put it like this, but then I have to be concerned that I don't pick up the strings from behind and confuse that. So basically what I found is that if I can find something smaller than the space, now I kind of had hoped that maybe my cutting board that I use um, as one of my clipboards would have been sufficient, but it's really, it's just too tight. It would, to kind of squeeze it around, you would get it to end up being sort of pushed out of shape. So that wasn't gonna work. Um, so what I have here is a clipboard that had been, um, it got snapped in my backpack. So since this side was kind of smaller, I kind of saw the an opportunity. I took a, a razor and kind of gouged in here, snapped the other side. And so now I have this skinnier board. So this is what we're going to use today. Um, just one of those things where I tried to recycle a little bit. It was rather than just throw it away because something had happened. Um, so let me get this situated here. I'm gonna need the strings from between the top and uh, down here, and I'll do the same for the other side. So let's first get this clip down. And I'll need the, these strings. Everything else is sort of something that can go now everything wants to get tangled up and hooked on various things around my desk, so bear with me as I... Some people are kind of claiming that I am I get right into it and you aren't seeing these other, you know, less glamorous bits. So I'm showing you exactly what happens when setting this up. So now I'm going to clip this sort of there. Let's see. Maybe I can move this side in just a little bit more. There. That looks pretty good to me. Now, get all this stuff here sort of tucked away in the back. It's not going to be used right now, so there's no sense in having it up and in my way. So at this point, it goes from being a flat to a cylinder. It's just a matter of joining it. I put the two pieces as close together as possible. If I'm going to go with my preferred knot of going towards the right, um, this one is just essentially kind of laying in between these two knots. Okay, so what does that mean? Well. Uh, see, I accidentally pulled those apart. Get this back to close again. And anchor down. It means that if I pull this, this string will slide between the other one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and tie this down a couple more times. But when I come back to pick up that black again, I'm going to want to make sure that I kind of make sure it's good and snugged up because otherwise you could see a gap right in here. Just a, a useful tip if you're not used to joining things together like this, if this isn't how you've made it. This would apply not only to making a cylinder but even just a, 
a simple double wide or, or any kind of project where you're, you're increasing or putting more than one bracelet together. All right. So this one goes all the way down to it reaches where this gray is. So that's what makes this pattern so easy. You can just, you can watch the colors and know where, it, where it's going. So now see, I just kind of make sure that those are snug together. And bring it down this way. So there might be some background noise you guys might notice. There's some construction going on outside some uh, renovations in the car park area so I apologize nothing I can do about it they've got a job to do I've got a job to do so make the most of this right all right so we are technically joined but it's not not super strong yet this uh, every other knot that I start adding at this point coming through here it's going to help shore that up and make it a little bit stronger, a little bit more, whatever. If you don't have it lined up very well at this point, let's say, for example, if this was raised and tilted off to the side, what you could end up doing is these knots that I'm adding in now would kind of compensate for that, that twist. And as a result, it will still fill in the space, but when you take the whole thing down, you'll notice the whole thing seems really off and, and kind of not as, as professional as you might have wanted, right? So I'm telling you this as just a, a precaution so that you can kind of check yourself and make sure that it's, it's sitting the way it should be. So just a, a nice straight row across here it looks good. Um, if you've only got two knots coming down that are actually joining it, there's still time to help correct that. It's uh, not until later that you really start to notice or that you couldn't get things back in play. Mind you, a bit of, of human whatever, if the, if the line isn't perfectly straight. I know there's, there's some people out there who spend extra hours on a bracelet because they're making sure that every knot is just so and they're they're trying to to get a line to be as perfectly straight as as humanly possible and kudos absolutely if that's your thing i'm not knocking you um but i do think for me personally it takes a little bit away from the human touch there's a reason why people buy my work and that's because there's a human involved in it this isn't a machine this isn't even capable of being made by a machine to my knowledge and the imperfections show that i am human and i think that's what people are looking for when when purchasing handcrafted things if um if i if they wanted a machine thing they could get it so much cheaper i mean and you know kudos to the, to the people who want that you know they buy a little ten dollar tote bag or something twenty dollar tote bag and if that's gonna suit your needs and make you happy and stuff kudos um but for us crafting people yes we want to we want it to be good work we want it to be quality work we want to have our craftsmanship really shine we choose patterns that have an, a level of difficulty that the uh, the buyer will immediately see and say, wow, you know, that's something. But if you spend hours just making more just to make a bracelet, well, how much more do you think that's going to equate if you're making something bigger like a bag? Quite a bit, I'd say. And at that point, are you really going to get paid well enough to justify all that extra time. I mean, some of my bags, even my, my biggest one, you know, certainly I don't think uh, 
fetches enough money that I, I could just do that alone as my, my source of income. I mean, that thing took months. You check my Instagram from when it basically started to, to the finish. It, that was really quite a bit of time. So could I, could I live on this alone? Probably no. And if I was trying to be that meticulous, that would be just that much more time and effort going into each production that, uh, again, I don't think I could get that money back out of it. So, you know, these are just, I'm just offering ideas, that reasons that how my work ends up the way it is. And, you know, if you still want to go and put all that effort in and, you know, that, that's kudos. And I know that there's a number of you who are making these projects for yourself. And in which case, absolutely. Take all the time you need. Make it as beautiful as possible. Show the world what you're capable of. And if you come across the person who is going to honor that by paying you what it, your time is worth, then absolutely take on those projects. That's that's the the greatest thing that I think any of us crafters can have is to find that person that really truly uh, appreciates what it is that we put into this. So you can see now I'm kind of I'm off to the side. The join was originally over here. I'm coming over here and getting the the groundwork done so I can bring in this color over here, the blackout just a little bit further. So, yeah, I was uh, wanting to get on this about a week ago, maybe I mean, a little bit more than a week already, but uh, I managed to do something and put my back into a, a way that uh, the spasms were so much that I couldn't sit to the desk to to do this and um, as much as that pained me I uh, I had to take care of myself first so I uh, back on track now doing my exercises and my stretches and all the things to help keep me back to being able to work so and I think that's why I, I am such a huge advocate for the clipboards and even potentially these easels. Um, you don't necessarily need the easel. If you're, it comes in handy, like in this case where I'm, I've got the, the camera in a still position. Or if I'm, say, working in the living room and, you know, with the family around and watching TV and stuff and we're going to put everything away come dinner time, I can just pick this whole thing up, take it, and set it to the side. And when I come back to the thing, the project, and I bring this back out to the table, it's exactly how I left it. So I can, I can pick up that rhythm again and, and get right onto it. And uh, the way I have it set up is really about me and being able to sit here and having a a good posture it uh it really helps me out considerably so and you might be saying hey i'm young i'm i don't need to worry about such things i can pin it to my pants i can i can do whatever and i can be crunched up in this little pretzeled position and I, I come out of it just fine. That, that's, uh, that's true when you're young, but that will actually have an effect on you as you age. So the more time you spend being twisted and contorted into a shape that you may spend hours and hours doing, what you'll find is later on your posture won't the, the 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 best for your health I'm trying to say this nicely um, yeah you may be more hunched over which um, that may not sound terrible but it's it's it everything has consequences if your posture 
is bad and you're hunched over, your internal organs are squeezed more together than they should be, more than they naturally should be. As a result, um, you can end up with all kinds of other ailments that could have been easily avoided. So it's one of those things like, you know, where parents tell you, you know, brush your teeth and you're like, well, I, I skipped it once and my teeth didn't fall out. So what's the big deal? Well, you do it enough times, it will ha have an effect. So the question is, how much do you want to, to take that ch risk when the alternative is ra rather simple? Like I said, you know, you don't necessarily have to have the easel. You, if you have just a, the clipboard, which I think this particular clipboard was probably less than $2, easily less than $2, um, you can rest it off of your lap while sitting at a table um, and then keep your posture, you know. So it's, it's a case of, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to do something beneficial for yourself. So, so why not do it? Make yourself, make your older self happy now. So, almost got this gray down here. Oop, I bumped the, uh, the camera there, the other camera. I suppose in edit, I can just use the top down view so you don't have to see that wiggle motion. All right. This one. So. I'm not sure how long you guys really want these videos. I've been making them to try to be shorter so as to not bore everybody to death. It seems that most people are bailing after, I don't know, a few minutes or so. I am uh, don't know if that's just, you know, maybe uh, the, not, it's not the topic they wanted to see or uh, they didn't think it was the, the video for them. I don't know. You guys uh, need to leave me more comments. Let me know what's going on. Let me know, you know, if you, I've listened to you this far. You we're, we're almost 18 minutes in. Let's, uh, I want more, I want more. Or shut up already. Just show us how to make the knots or whatever it is. Let me know. Um, kinda, kinda hoping to produce good quality videos that the people that are viewing it are actually wanting to see. So we are well connected here. It looks like everything is nice and straight coming across by the looks of it. I can uh, adjust that a little bit if necessary. No, nope, looks good. Some of that is from uh, the years of experience. So. This is really coming together now. I am really excited about this. I'm not sure that we will get all of the video of this happening. Um, after this segment here, I will put in the diamonds and have it reverse around so it basically looks a lot like the leather clipboard that I have. Um, but then after that, I'm going to let it go down a couple more segments before it uh, knots off. and. Uh, having the cameras rolling kind of 
limits what you know how much I can do and when um, I take care of my uh, elderly uh, in-laws so um, being off by myself like this kind of puts a lot of extra burden on my wife so what I'll do is seeing as how the the middle part of this is really just more of the knotting I'll uh, get that accomplished and I will come back with another video to show you how I finish this so hopefully that gives you everything you need to know to be able to make your own and if there's any portions that you, I've left out any questions you may have um, I certainly hope that you'll give me comments or send me emails or just get in, in touch with me it'll help me to come up with content for future videos and then um, we can have fun with with those as well I mean I have some ideas of some things I want to get made and uh, I've got a couple projects somebody uh, saw the watch that I posted on Instagram they want one unfortunately I can't do anything about that at the moment because the colors they want are something that I've actually ran out of so I'll be placing a string order shortly and get that fulfilled for them so but this is it this is now a nice steadily built tube um, I think we're gonna cut this video here in a few more moments a couple minutes um, only if, if for no other reason my camera likes to uh, stop my videos um, I think that has something to do with the European Union I'm not sure how that all worked out but um, until I get a different camera for it this is what I'm stuck with so if there's again if there's if any of this is confusing to you um, let me know what if you're going to consider making a project of this size the first thing I would say is be confident in the pattern that you choose you don't want you know I don't know 50 skeins 100 skeins worth of string to be wasted because somewhere along the line you um, you have to bail on the project because it was too complicated or you couldn't find your way through it so that's that's my my strongest advice but use a pattern that you're okay with even if it's chevrons you can make a bag with chevrons why not right it won't be you know like this I, I personally think this one is going to be far more eye-catching but it can certainly be done so you know stick with what, what you know work it out and um, enjoy it this is this is a this should be fun you know this you should enjoy your work and if you do it'll show you know you'll people will pick up on that immediately and that's that's another important lesson if you're if you're putting in those positive vibes people will be drawn to it they'll see and they'll they'll want some of those positive vibes for themselves so all right i think we're gonna end this here and i hope this helps you in your own projects and see we now have the beginning of a a nice little bag i think uh I think I'm going to be really, really pleased with this and carrying this around with me certainly will be able to let me show people, you know, well, this is what I do. This is what I make. And uh, hopefully that will help me even have more business. So, all right. You guys have a awesome time and uh, I will see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, do click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions you'd like answered in future tutorials, leave a comment below. For more on friendship bracelets, visit akaawol.com. Also, be sure to hit me up on Instagram at akaawol. 
Thanks for watching and don't get your strings in a bunch.